Welcome back to your node series. In this video, we are going to be talking about posting data and saving it to the database. This is very important if we want to add data to an application. And yeah, that's pretty much it. This video is sponsored by Filestack, powerful API to upload, transform, and deliver any files into your app with powerful transformations to allow you to modify your images as well as URL-based transformations. I really appreciate them supporting this channel. If you want to support this channel as well, check out the link down below. So to save data, we are going to be working with the post method. And in this case, we're going to be at slash API slash customers. We already talked about how to get the request body. We can console log that if we wish just to see that in the console. But what we need to do is we actually need to create a new customer here to do that, we can say const customer, give it some name, and then we'll say new customer. And then eventually we will say customer dot save. Now there's a few more steps obviously because we're creating this new customer, but we actually need to provide values for it. So to do this, we can create an object in here and provide values for each of the fields on a customer object coming from the request.body. So the two fields we need are name. This is going to come from request.body dot name. Since request.body is an object, it makes sense to do it this way. And then industry is request.body dot industry. So I want to pause here and just test this out because we can actually shorten this code a little bit. My bad, that should be a comma, not a semicolon. So our app is running. We hit send. I forgot to have a response, but that's okay because I wanted to show you something real quick. You can see we get the object here listed in the console, which is going to be the exact same structure as this object created here. Taking a look at the database, you can see that new customer defined here. So it did in fact save to the database, but because we're matching that structure, we could just instead of creating a new object with these different properties, we could just pass request.body in directly and we'll save this. And I'm just going to send a response because it's drive me crazy. So often we will want to use 201, which is the status code for created. And then we'll provide JSON, which can be the uh, customer that we created. So let's go ahead and say new customer two and hit send. And there we go. That is our customer. Let's try one more thing. I want to say new customer three, and I want to actually add a new attribute in here, test, and we'll just provide this a value of test. So let's go ahead and hit send. And you can see that value did not show up on that new customer. Even though that value was received on the back end, the way we have our schema set up, test is not a valid property. So I think using the request body here directly is totally fine, unless there's a situation when you are expecting more in the request body in addition to just that customer. In that case, you might need to do like request.body.customer or something like that. But in this situation, the body is directly the customer, so we don't have to worry about it. So that's how we can save a little bit of time. I just wanted to show you both ways of creating this new customer. So in this situation, we're just doing it directly from the request body. Now I wanted to call out that this is an object with a property customer, and then that contains the object itself. And this is the structure that I prefer. This allows you to easily in your response include other stuff if you wanted after the customer. And also just for consistency sake. So this is the structure I go for. And I wanted to explain in our code, if you're not super familiar with the JavaScript and you're still kind of learning, this is a shorthand way of saying, hey, we want a property called customer with that customer object. So this is basically the same thing as saying, hey, we're gonna have a customer and the value of it is going to be customer. So if I saved this, issued this same thing, so let's just increment this to customer four, you can see we get the same exact structure. Another structure you may often see is no outer object with the customer property at all, and we just pass customer directly. Let me save this and show you what this looks like. In this situation, we're no longer going to have that customer property and it's just going to be those attributes. Either one of these will work. You just have to change the way you work with this API a little bit, whether or not you go into that nested customer property. As mentioned, I prefer to have the property which describes the data that's being shown. What is it? versus just having a bunch of properties with no explanation. However, many people would argue that that concept is redundant because you can tell what kind of resource where you're working with based on the endpoint. But either way, I'm going to go ahead and return this to how it was, which is to surround this with curly braces. The other thing we need to talk about is what if something goes wrong? Well, we're going to have a try catch as usual. 
So after we create a new customer, we will try to save that customer and see if it works. So we'll say try and then surround customer.save like so, and then catch E for error. And then inside of here, we can actually, we'll talk about the error in a second. Let's first talk about what we do if it goes right, which is this right here. So we'll cut this and move this inside of the try like so. If things go wrong, we could do something else. For example, give them a different status code. So 201 would be created. Instead, we could say 400, which is a bad request from the user implying that they've submitted the wrong kind of data. And in here, if we wanted, we could have an error object having e.message as the value for the error property. An easy way to try this out is actually to mark certain fields as required for the schema. So if we go over to our customer.js, this is our schema, and we can replace this value just being string with actually an object that has the data type and whether or not it's required. So let's remove this string value, replace it with curly braces. We will have a property which is the type, and now that's where we're going to say string but we can now have a required, which is either true or false. So let's go ahead and say true. So now if we remove everything as an example, it should complain about the name not being there. You can see that's not exactly what happened. And this is because there's a mistake in the code that I missed initially. And basically that is we have to have an await here. So that way we are waiting for the customer to be saved before we try to send a response. What was originally happening is we started the customer.save and then immediately after that we gave a response and even though that customer never actually successfully saved as you can see in here on the terminal it's complaining about name being required so yeah definitely don't be a newbie like me and forget the await keyword but you know those things happen so i think it makes sense for me to show that additionally for the await keyword you'll have to label the function as async okay so now we should be able to save get the app running again. And now if we submit nothing in the body, it'll complain saying customer validation failed, name path name is required, which is exactly the problem. So we could actually pass a customer with nothing else other than a name and that should work as well. And there you go. This will also help people just type things out correctly. So for example, if you provided the name attribute, but you accidentally spelled it N-A-N-E -E instead of N-A-M-E, it'll complain that the name attribute is required. And that would cause the user to double check the provided values, realize that they have a typo. So this video was quite a bit of information, kind of jumping around different examples. So hopefully it wasn't too hard to follow. Sometimes I don't like showing my mistakes and I want to re-record the content, but I think, you know, Forgetting a keyword or making a small mistake here and there is pretty normal. And I want to show you those problems so when you run into those same problems, you're able to fix those. So for those of you who are just jumping into this video from a search, hopefully it wasn't too scatterbrained. But for those of you who've been following along from the beginning, you're probably learning a lot more and getting a lot of more useful information. So let me know what you guys think. Thank you for the watching and I will be sure to subscribe to your viewing of the next video. Thank you so much for watching and be sure to subscribe. Peace out.